After the recent news about recovered alien craft, I keep coming back to the 2017 quote about the recovered alien alloys. We're sort of in the position of what would happen if you gave Leonardo da Vinci a garage door opener. I thought this was foolish hyperbole at the time. If these materials were so unearthly, tell us why you think that. Turns out, they did. Shortly after the 2017 New York Times article, Hal Putoff and other members of To The Stars Academy referred to these recovered materials as meta-materials. Various news outlets reported on this, but at a very superficial level. Like me, he probably dismissed it as a frivolous, meaningless term. Turns out, meta-material science is very real, and is already producing capabilities that seem like science fiction. Once you have an understanding of what these metamaterials can do, and you think ahead to what a hyper-advanced version of these metamaterials might look like, all of the recent reported UFO phenomenon starts to seem explainable. Thanks for joining Rather Be Squidding. Stay with me as I explore the history and the current state of metamaterial science, and explore how it might relate to UFO phenomenon. Modern metamaterials have a very interesting origin story. In the 1990s, a British company called Macroni Materials Technology developed a carbon-based coating that you could apply on a boat or a plane, and it would make it nearly invisible to radar. But they had no idea how it worked. They hired John Pendry, a condensed matter physicist, to study and try to explain the phenomenon. Normally, one would look at the chemistry or molecular makeup of a substance to describe its physical properties. Pendry found that in this carbon material, it was not the molecular or chemistry makeup that gave its radar absorption properties, but rather the internal structure of the carbon rods in the material. These rods were about the same length as the amplitude of a radar wave. Pendry realized that by modifying a material's internal structure, you could modify physical properties like electromagnetic absorption. You could even change some properties to configurations not found in nature. Pendry termed these materials metamaterials, or beyond materials. This radar absorbing carbon material is an example of a metamaterial engineered to absorb electromagnetic radiation. You could also do the reverse, and by having a different internal structure, engineer a material that would boost or amplify a signal. Both of these applications are very interesting in that they accomplish functions with an incredible efficiency of size and energy. However, they are well within the realm of imagination. Engineering the refractive index takes it to the sci-fi level. The refractive index is how fast light goes through a medium. When light passes through a material of one refractive index to another with a different refractive index, the light bends. With metamaterials, you could engineer a material to have whatever refractive index you would like. You could even have a negative refraction index. This is a very interesting effect as there is nothing in nature that has a negative refraction index. If you were to see something like this, it would appear to defy physics. That in and of itself is pretty cool, but the real kicker is, by engineering a material with varying degrees of refractive indexes, you could theoretically engineer a box and have that box be made of metamaterials that redirect the light waves around the box, making the box and anything inside of it appear invisible. This is called metamaterial cloaking, and it is not vaporware. They've already accomplished this with microwaves, and it seems that metamaterial cloaking of the visible light spectrum is not that far off. And this only begins to scratch the surface on what is currently possible or what will soon be possible with metamaterials. It is certainly a very interesting field of study. A week ago, I did a video describing the history of the reported recovered UFO material documented in the New York Times 2017 article. At the time, I was very skeptical of the extraterrestrial origin of the piece. Now, I am not so sure. How Putoff describes the material as a metamaterial. He recently gave a talk where he explains his rationale for this. He describes reading a recent paper on metamaterials that described how a material with a bismuth layer followed by a magnesium layer of specific thicknesses would act as a radio antenna for terahertz waves. Putoft noticed that this almost exactly matched the profile of the recovered materials. This is interesting for two reasons. First off, the artifact was sent to UFO researchers in 1998. John Pendry did not publish his paper on metamaterials until 1999. If this piece is a hoax, it is very coincidental that it matches the profile of this very new type of material. 
Second, it is interesting that this potential metamaterial deals with the terahertz waves. You probably haven't heard of terahertz waves, as we do not yet have a good way to generate and control them. However, it has been speculated that terahertz waves would be very useful for analytical purposes. Thus, it would make sense that something like a very high-tech probe might use and utilize terahertz waves. Both of these lend some credibility to the theory that this material came from a very advanced craft of unknown origin. In addition to this recovered artifact, metamaterials seem like they may be behind many unexplained UFO phenomena. Many people who report first-hand encounters with these craft report them as being solid objects with no wires, connectors, or control surfaces. This aligns perfectly with what you would expect from an advanced metamaterial craft. Instead of circuits, you'd have internal nanostructures which would interact with different electromagnetic waves and perform complex tasks. It has been long speculated that these UFOs are powered by gravity engines. If gravity really is represented by gravity waves, you could imagine a metamaterial that interacts with gravity. This would be a material that could absorb, amplify, or bend gravity waves. Although it is unclear what a metamaterial interacting with gravity might look like, it does seem that such a material could explain the mastery of gravity that these crafts exhibit. Finally, one of the more bizarre phenomena associated with UFOs is telepathic communication. People describe thoughts or images coming to them as they experience these UFOs. I think that metamaterials may also explain this. If you had a metamaterial that could amplify, boost, and deliver a brainwave signal, you could potentially create one that would bypass the human skull and go directly to one's mind. Of course, all of this is quite out there, but the theory of complete cloaking also seemed quite out there before I was aware of the realities of metamaterial science. And after, after learning all of this, I can see how Dr. Putoff might feel like da Vinci studying a garage door opener looking at these materials. Have you heard of metamaterials before? Does any of this make sense or have I gone off the deep end? I've linked to several metamaterial papers and videos below in the description. Please check those out as well and tell me your thoughts. Thank you for listening and please subscribe and tune back into Rather Be Squidding as I continue to explore this and other topics related to UFO disclosure.